Oh Lord, what great things we just got to sing to you, to each other. Lord, and as we come to this time to reflect on you, on the cross, during this time of communion, I do pray that you would be magnified and glorified as our hearts are prepared for this. And it's always in your great name we pray. Amen. As we come to this time of communion, we're going to be spending some time in God's word. And so we want to make sure that everyone actually has a copy of God's word available. So if you do not have a copy, please go ahead and raise your hand. And these men will go ahead and distribute those to you. Today, we're going to be primarily in Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 11. Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 11. We're also going to to provide some context, uh, be in Jeremiah chapter 19, starting in verse 3. So if you want to follow along there, you can do that too. Jeremiah chapter, we'll be starting in chapter 19. The fall of Jerusalem in 587 BC was one of the most devastating events in Israel's history. This event displayed God's holiness and hatred for sin. But leading up to this event, we see God's compassion for and his patience with sinners. And we see this clearly demonstrated. Jeremiah's ministry to Judah was during the reign of the kings leading up to the Babylonian captivity and the subsequent fall of Jerusalem. To provide some context for our verse, chapter 18, verse 11, we're going to read a passage from Jeremiah chapter 19, verses 3 through 9, that summarize, they do a good job summarizing the sin of Judah and Jerusalem and provides a description of the impending judgment that is coming to Jerusalem. Starting in verse 3 of chapter 19. Hear the word of Yahweh, O kings of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I am about to bring a calamity upon this place at which the ears of everyone who hears it will tingle because they have forsaken me and have made this an alien place and have burned sacrifices in it to other gods that neither they nor their forefathers nor the kings of Judah had ever known. And because they filled this place with the blood of the innocent and have built the high places of Baal to burn their sons in the fire as burnt offerings. Burnt offerings to Baal, a thing which I never commanded or spoke of, nor did it ever enter my mind. Therefore, behold, days are coming, declares Yahweh, when this place will no longer be called Topeth or the Valley of Ben-Hanom, but rather the Valley of Slaughter. I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hand of those who seek their life. And I will give over their carcasses as food for the birds of the sky and the beasts of the earth. I will also make this city a desolation and an object of hissing. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and hiss because of all its disasters. I will make them eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they will eat one another's flesh in the siege and in the distress with which their enemies and those who seek their life will distress them. And we know from Jeremiah's account in Lamentations that occurred after the siege and fall of Jerusalem that all of these horrifying details of destruction and carnage came to pass. But leading up to this event, God sent Jeremiah and others to warn Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem of the impending judgment and to call them to repentance. God did this over and over again and again. Now, please turn to Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 11. And follow along as I read. So now then, speak, God speaking uh, through Jeremiah, speak to the men of Judah and against the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Yahweh, 
Behold, I am fashioning calamity against you and devising a plan against you. Oh, turn back each of you from his evil way and reform your ways and your deeds. Yahweh is declaring the judgment that is about to come upon Jerusalem. As a potter forms and fashions clay into a vessel, God is forming and fashioning this calamity, this disaster against Jerusalem. And this is not some mild disaster that is being warmed of. This is the complete destruction of his temple and this city. 2 Kings 21.13 says, God says, speaking of this event, that he will wipe Jerusalem as one wipes a dish. He is going to cleanse it of its idolatry and its wickedness. He is in every way against them. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem have earned this judgment. They rightly deserve it. Now look at the second half of verse 11. Oh, turn back, each of you, from his evil way and reform your ways and your deeds. It is shocking to see the heart of God and his compassionate plea for them to turn back. That they would turn from their evil way, that they would return to him, that they would repent of their wickedness. And if they did this, he would relent. God sent this message to his people over and over and again and again. He was so patient with them. But his patience with hard-hearted rebellion does not last forever. God says in Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 11, I am full of the wrath of Yahweh, and I am weary of holding it in. God righteously desires to pour out his wrath on sin, but patiently provides an opportunity for repentance. And we know that in 587 BC, God's patience ran out and all of what he had been warning against came to pass. Fast forward to today. Has the heart of man changed? Are we in our world any better? Is mankind any less idolatrous? Everyone in this world and everyone in this room is a sinner before a holy God. All of us rightly deserve his wrath poured out on us eternally. But the compassion of God is most clearly seen in the cross. At the cross, God sent his son, his innocent son, to die in the place of sinners. At the cross, sin was punished. At the cross, wrath was satisfied. At the cross, the guilty are reconciled. At the cross, God is declaring to a sinful world, be reconciled, repent, and follow Jesus. Be saved from the wrath to come. This message of the cross, this good news, this gospel goes out to a rebellious world over and over again and again. What mercy, what compassion. If you're here this morning and by your own admission, you don't believe this good news. You don't consider yourself a follower of Christ. Then we would simply ask when the elements come, when the tray comes, that you would just simply pass those by. This is a, a family time for those that are followers of Christ to remember and to proclaim his death on the cross. But know this, God is holy and he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. His patience for enduring your rebellion will come to an end and you will suffer eternally for it. But there is an opportunity right now that you can turn from your sin and turn to Christ. Do that right now. We would love to have a conversation with you. You can ask me, any one of the other pastors, the person who brought you. We would love to discuss what following Christ is all about. Believer, 
You and I are sinners. And we rightly deserve God's wrath for our rebellion. But our sins have been forgiven. Praise God for his compassion for sinners like us. Praise God for his patience and long suffering with us and in our sin while we were still unbelievers. Praise God that Jesus, the Son of God, willingly went to the cross to pay such a great price and to suffer in our place. When your hearts are prepared, please take communion on your own.